Nation. We pray that you will be inspired, blessed, and encouraged by what you hear weekly as you tune into Amazing Grace on the Faith Broadcast. Now your host, Tamla Coleman. Thank you for tuning in to Amazing Grace with Tamla Coleman here on Faith Broadcast. Amazing Grace is about encouraging, inspiring through testimonies, relationships, and most importantly, the love of God. I am so excited to bring on special guests to speak about their trials, their struggles, their deliverance, and their breakthroughs and informative topics. I am truly, truly honored to bring shows that will change, inspire, and motivate you each and every week. Well, listeners, tonight, oh my goodness, we have a treat for you all tonight. My guest tonight is an amazing woman of God whom I am so honored to have with me on the show tonight. Listeners, you are in for a blessing. She is the author of Driving Into Infinity, Living With My Brother Spirit, which in details the unexpected death of her brother, a beloved brother. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Sam Houston State University. Her career of more than 40 years includes high school English teacher, partner in a woman-owned business, national manager for worldwide engineering firm, and executive director for a major Houston association. Wow, this is amazing. Paula has been a guest on a number of podcasts in 2019. She was featured speaker, she's featured speaker at the 2018 International Association for Near Death Studies. Wow, and there is so much more to hear from this awesome, beautiful, amazing woman. So without further ado, allow me to introduce my guest for the evening, Miss Paula Lentz. How are you doing today, Miss Lentz? I'm doing fantastic, and I so appreciate being on your show. I'm very excited about that. You are so very welcome, and I tell you, I'm indeed delighted and indeed honored to have you with me on Amazing Grace tonight, and I tell you, you have a story behind the story, and that's what I always say on this show, there's always a story behind the story. And in amazement with the things that I have read about you already, I want my listeners to also know how great an awesome woman you are and the things that you have done and what you have experienced. So just tell us a little bit about who Miss Lentz is. Well, as you uh, talked about, I've, I've had a long business career, and uh, this this. Uh, incident and experience that I had in 1983, once I retired, which I just retired a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. suddenly I knew that it was time to share my story because when this happened to me in 1983 with my brother, mm-hmm. I was not inclined to talk about this side of my life. Uh, there were maybe two or three people who uh, close friends of mine who ever knew anything about this. And wow. it was, again, just not, not a side of me that I talked uh, with people about because I, I myself didn't know exactly what had happened to me, and I spent a lot of years just reading uh, just hundreds and hundreds of books through the years related to spirituality and uh, and, you know, paranormal experiences and that sort of thing. But I, I felt moved to finally write my story and what, what had happened and uh, embark on um, speaking to people and groups uh, about my experience in a way of reaching out to help others who have uh, tragically lost people that they love and... So my story really begins 36 years ago, 1983, and this marks 
you know, as I said, 36 years ago since this happened. And wow. I'm the oldest child in my family. My brother was four years younger. I have a sister who's 10 years younger. Uh, but essentially, my brother and I shared our childhood together. And so I'm going to fast forward here to uh, a, a time back when the day that this experience happened to me. And it was a day where I was going with my husband that day, Friday, October the 7th, in Houston. That's where we lived. And I went to a Greek festival, and my husband was uh, coming down later that afternoon to uh, join in uh, in the activities. And when I got there, I uh, joined a big group of my friends, and we were having lunch there at the Greek festival. And suddenly, through the crowds, I could see my husband making his way toward me. And as he got closer, I saw his face, and I'd never seen him look like that before. And I knew that something was very wrong. Mm -hmm. And when he got close to me, he put both his hands on my arms and looked me right in the eyes. And in a quavering vo voice, he said, Donnie was killed in an accident this morning. Oh my gosh. And I just stared at him. And in my mind's eye, it was as though all I could see was a picture of the earth just falling, 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 and crashing at my feet. And mm -hmm. I just fell over toward the floor just screaming, no, no, no. And all my friends were there. They came running over, huge crowds. Um, and I was just completely destroyed. And... Um, I just, I didn't know how to act or how to accept any of this. And just a, a little bit from my book, if that's okay, just to describe how I felt in those moments. I just said that every moment was sheer agony during those days with no words to adequately describe a broken heart. Nothing made sense and everything about life was dark. I barely slept. I moved in a daze. I wanted to die every day. This terrible, impenetrable wall now separated me from ever having contact with my beloved brother again. How do you process that fact and integrate it into your life? I could not. And then at the burial site, I wondered how I could possibly continue living like this. Mm -hmm. And... Then I, at that point, I was in my hometown, of course, having gone through the funeral, and three days after my brother's funeral, still being in my hometown, I decided to take his personal truck, uh, because I lived in Houston and, and uh, my husband had left me there in my hometown, and the only access I had to a vehicle was his personal truck. He had been killed in a company truck. And I decided to take some flowers to my grandparents that day. So as I'm driving to get to their house, which is about a 15-minute uh, drive from my dad's house, I'm driving, and suddenly I developed 360-degree vision. I could see wow. everything around me in all mm. directions as I was driving. Mm. So you can imagine how shocking that was to me. Yes. And, but really before I could even think about it, I became aware of the fact that I could see my brother right at my shoulder, just right behind my right shoulder. And mm -hmm. he appeared to be a pattern of light, but I could still see his features. I knew it was him. And... He began speaking to me telepathically, and he told me not to be sad, that he was happy, and most of all, he wanted me to know what life was like for him now. And he explained to me that he was on 
what he called another plane of being and Mm -hmm. that it had simply been time for him to leave. Then I realized suddenly that I was no longer in my body. I left my body and I felt like I was wishing away and uh, I at first it was like I saw almost like an outline of a landscape. It, it reminded me of looking at a negative of a photograph actually. And then I moved on and it was as though I were out in the middle of the universe um, and what I call infinity and my brother stayed with me throughout this entire experience. He was right there with me. And um, the, I began to feel this wave of all peace that just mm-hmm. came over me and just completely this huge, I, I can't describe it any other way, it's just this huge wave of peace. And I felt that. And then the second wave I experienced that came over me was all knowledge. And mm-hmm. I knew that I knew everything that had ever happened in the universe for all time. Just wow. this entire feeling about all knowledge. And then the third and last wave that came over me was this all-encompassing energy of love, which in my book I I call spirit. Mm -hmm. And this love that came over me was like nothing I had ever experienced on earth. It was just a complete feeling of being loved, cared about, fulfillment, Uh, there was like nothing more that I needed, that I was complete. And and then it was a question of, you know, I wasn't just knowing these things, but I suddenly felt and knew that I was one with everything. I was one with everything. All knowledge, I was one with all peace, I was one with this love. It was, I knew that everything in the entire universe is all oneness. Nothing mm-hmm. separates anything from us, uh, from, from this energy of love or spirit. We're all one with that. It was just the most amazing experience ever. Wow. And at that moment, I knew clearly that I was out of my body, and I knew that I did not care one thing about returning to my body, that I wanted to go on. I knew that that I needed to go I'll say another step before I really would be crossing over uh, Mm -hmm. into infinity, eternity. And when I began thinking like that, that I just wanted to go on, I wanted to move on and leave behind my earthly life, then I began to, again, feel as though I were whooshing away very rapidly. And as that began to happen, my brother who was still there with me, right at my shoulder. I guess if I had a place of a shoulder, I felt I was just consciousness. Um, He began exerting his energy uh, on me, and he said, no, you can't go yet. It's not your time. And his energy um, essentially pushed me back down very rapidly, and I saw myself coming into my body into the truck that I'd been driving. And I felt like I sort of landed with a thud, I guess, <laughs> into back into my body. And when I when I returned, I realized 
that somehow during this time frame, which was probably four or five minutes, I'm just guesstimating, um, I had made I had made the turn onto the road um, that took me directly to my grandparents, and I have no idea how I did any of that um, because I certainly have no recollection of that. Mm. And when I got to my grandparents' house. I didn't say anything to them about this experience that I'd had. And it was it was as though, well, first of all, it was like I had this glow about me. I, I just felt so at peace. It was as though nothing could bother me. And I, it was almost as though I were looking at my grandparents and their grief that they had for my brother, like I was looking at it from his viewpoint, you know, his perspective seeing how deep in grief that they were. And, you know, I, I did say to them, well, I know that Donnie's all right, and uh, I know that everything's going to be okay. But, you know, it was almost like I didn't say the words. But, you know, after that, after a day of experiencing that, um, the next day, you know, my grief returned, and and I was just perplexed by what had happened to me. I just had no idea. And, um, of course, you have to remember this is 1983. So there was yeah. no Internet for me to go to and look up other people's experiences right. like this. Right. So I that was one of the things that happened to me in, in regard to, like, an after effect when I returned home. Um, was that I just felt compelled to read all the books I could get my hands on, and it, and and that's that's something that's continued through the years. I've just continued to read so many books on spirituality and other people's experiences and near death experiences and and uh, and that sort of thing. But you know, after I had this experience with my brother. And even when I returned home, I began to have outreach from him. Now, I never had another out-of-body experience, but one time I did see him very briefly in my house. But all these other after effects that started happening, uh, you know, included things that he would move. He would move things like pictures or chairs. Uh, I know one time my husband and I, we were in our TV room, and uh, this tall bookcase, this this book came flying out halfway across the room at our feet one night when we were watching TV. And both of us looked at each other like, what just <laughs> happened here? I mean, these kinds of things, you know, continued to happen. Right. And, and they've, con you know, my brother still moves pictures even now. And here's an interesting thing. All of these pictures and all this stuff that happened, uh, most of the time it was a case of, you know, I'd walk into my office, my home office, and I would see a picture had been turned down of him or he and I or, you know, something like that. And it would always have already happened. But now, yeah. recently, in my office, Two times now, while I was sitting here at my computer, very quietly reading and doing some things, my brother has uh, moved pictures out of this bookcase onto the floor while I was sitting here. <laughs> wow. So that's something new. That's never happened before. Um, but, you know, in my book, I detail a lot of the after effects that I've had, um, and a lot of these after effects are very much the same as though someone had, who has had a, a near-death experience, mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the things that happened to me is I had a complete change in consciousness. I mean, when I came back, I just couldn't view life and humanity and everything the same way that I always had, and, uh, and then, you know, these other after effects, like, when I drive on freeways, you know, lights go out behind me as I pass. These are all supposed to be like electromagnetic changes mm -hmm. in your body that cause these kind of things to happen. 
even if I walk at night, you know, on the street, the street lamps will go out as I pass and then they come back on. Oh, wow. Um, but I've also, you know, in this change of consciousness I talked about, um, I've also developed, um, you know, greater intuition and knowing about things that are going to happen or coming up. And uh, I actually now I'm to the point where I I can um, help people you know, someone will start telling me about something tragic in their life or whatever, and suddenly I'll get information coming through to me and mm-hmm. about their situation or how to help them, and I'll start telling them. For example, the other day a good friend of mine that I hadn't spoken to in a long time, um, her mother had passed, and she was she actually started crying when she was telling me about it, and uh, she was upset because she hadn't felt her mother around her and all of a sudden it came through to me that um that she herself was she had energy that was blocking her heart and that's why Mm. she wasn't able to feel her mother around her because she had had to make a lot of uh decisions about her mother's health care at the end and she continued, you know, after all this time to second guess about those decisions that she had made. And that's why she started crying, because she was still blaming herself for things. All this stuff was coming Mm -hmm. through to me. And I told her, I said, your mother is showing up right here by me. I mean, I could see her mom's face, and I knew her mother. And her mother was telling me, you need to tell her that I already know all these things that she wanted to tell me at the end, and she she didn't. That was one of the things she told me. And she said, I already, I already know all the things she was going to tell me, and she doesn't need to worry about any of that. She needs to let all that go. Mm. And so that's what I told her. I said, your mother's right here. She already knows. Stop. And and so these words were coming through to me, and I actually had to stop and wait for a word. I said, stop, and I said, just a minute, it's coming through. And the word was crucifying. I said, stop crucifying yourself for these things. I said, you need to write down on paper that you let go of all these things and that you know your mom is happy and knows these things. And I said, that's how you remove the blockages in front of your heart. I said, I see this wall of stone, and it's from these things that you've second-guessed yourself and blamed yourself for. I said, you need to remove those, and then you'll feel your mother. So those are the kinds of experiences I have now mm. as time has gone on. Um Wow, unimaginable. And, you know, as you were speaking, Paula, I'm just, I'm seeing all these things that are you're speaking about. And to me, it seems that your brother, Don, was showing you, giving you peace. He was giving you the peace that you said, let you know that he's okay, everything is all right. And also that he knows the heartache that the family was feeling. And you were that person that he had to come to to voice that to and to kind of with his spirit. And, you know, death, even if it's a death that, you know, someone being ill, you know, we know they're going to pass or we know, you know, these things are going to happen. But it's even more devastating when it's unexpected. And I heard it in your voice when you started out earlier speaking about when you got the news from your husband. I can't I, – I, I'm just looking at you and just seeing it in vision, seeing you, just getting that news about your your beloved brother. And I'm sure that was so devastating, as you said. And then when you quoted your uh, a part of your book to me, I just felt it. I, I'm so full. I was so full with that because, you know, a lot of people feel the same way. They have gone through the same things. But even in the midst of uneventful loss, your brother was bringing peace to you even after. And it's just so such a great thing that you're sharing this because you're helping other people with their grief, just like the young lady you were speaking about and her mother, because she was holding on to that, and she probably was going to continue to hold on to it until she met you, you know, until you gave her that word from her mother. And it's almost like a prophetic type of calling 
that you have now. You're full aware of your spiritual consciousness now. And as you were talking, I can feel that you even during the time that your brother, you said you saw your, you can't, you knew you saw your brother's like a, a vision of who he was. You know that it was him. It was almost like you had a physical and spiritual and emotional um, experience all at the same time. And with that being said, you have all three of the combined with yours as well as your brother's. And you did say that you and your brother were pretty close. Um, you, you shared your childhood together. Um, how was your childhood? I mean, did you, you know, was this like like a, a more than just a younger brother? Of course, you were the oldest. How was your childhood with your brother? <laughs> well, you know, my brother wanted to tag along with me everywhere in the neighborhood wow. when I was out wow. playing. And, you know, my mother would say, no, you know, I would complain to her. Uh, you know, he just drags along with me, and he was like, "No, no, your bro- your brother loves you. You take care of that little thing." <laughs> and so, you know, that's another aspect, though, that you bring in talking about this. Um, you know, I being the oldest, and of course, he was only four years younger. Um, you know, m- mother and always made me kind of responsible for looking out for him in the neighborhood. You know. <laughs> And uh, and so, of course, I would complain about that. But you know what? Uh, crazy though it may seem, you know, when I got the news about what had happened to him, that old training came to bear in, in the forefront suddenly. And wow. I I just said to myself, why wasn't I there to prevent this? Why wasn't I there to stop this from happening, you know? And it was kind of like that old thing of I was supposed to protect him, and why wasn't I there? And, you know, my brother and I, again, even though we were grown in our 20s, 20s, well, I was 30 at the time that he died. I had just turned 30. But, you know, he and I talked by phone, you know, maybe – uh, every other week or so. I mean, we kept in touch with each other and what was going on. And one summer he stayed uh, with my husband and I in Houston. He had a job there he was uh, while he was going to A&M. And, um, and so he worked that summer and stayed there with us. And, you know, he was just so funny and entertaining. And, you know, he and I, uh, we, you know, we just – so loved each other. I mean, I love my sister too, and uh, it just, you know, that that just comes through. And and there was such a hole in my life with him, you know, moving on, and mm-hmm. not just my life, but of course my whole family's. But yes. you know, yes. um, with him still being around and everything, it at least is a comfort. You know, sometimes I I know that he's here. (laughs) And actually, the one day I was in here, you know, I mentioned that he moved some things while I was in my office. But, you know, I was deep in thought, and he moved these two pictures that had actually my sister and I and and uh, the three of us were in these photos, these two photos that he apparently used his energy to push out of this bookcase. (laughs) And when he did that, I mean – I jumped like a foot out of my chair over by my computer. And so I got up and I walked over to the bookcase and I said, I know you're here, Donnie. Cut it out. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, I still feel like there's at least communication there with us. Yes, and that's, that gives you the peace of knowing. It just this kind of keeps you going. And with yes. you sharing your story and also helping with other others that are going through the same thing, how receptive are people when they hear your story? You know, those that are going through it, is it are they at peace with hearing it? Do they have a sense of relief when you share your story? I think they do. You know, when I, when I give talks uh, and presentations, there's, I always have people come up to me, and they want to share with me, like, something that's happened, um, you know, f- that they think was from someone who had already passed. For example, this really older gentleman came up to me after one of my talks, and 
he started telling me about how in the middle of the night, one night, his arm was being tugged on, and he woke up, and he knew it was his wife there, his deceased wife, was tugging on his arm. And I said, yeah, well, she she probably was just checking in with you, wanted you to know she's okay. And I knew from having talked to him that he probably had never shared that experience with anyone else. And that is such a feeling to know that people feel safe. They want to come up and talk to me about something that's happened to them in their life. And so that's the kind of reception that I usually get from people when I'm speaking, uh, you know, making presentations in person. Wow. And, And you know, that is what this is all about for me. My passion and what I love about doing this now is that I know I'm reaching people who probably have carried these kind of secrets with them for many years yes. because that's just not the kind of thing that people usually talk about. Talk about, exactly, exactly. And that's why I asked that question because a lot of people, you know, may feel a little edgy about that, you know, don't believe in that type of thing or there's life after death or those types of things. I've heard them myself, and um, as I mentioned to you before the show as well, that, you know, even with experiences like this, you can ask 10 people about their experiences, and they will all have a different outlook on what they experienced. Um, I actually had a guest on my show at one time, and he actually had a heart attack. He actually died three times. Um, they tried to revive him three times, and he talks about what he saw in between In between the doctors trying to bring him back and revive him. And I tell you, it was amazing um, to hear it. And just like you said, you did not want to come back. Almost, You were like, okay, I'm almost a step into stepping into infinity, and he said the same thing. So it, the, the experiences are, are different, and a lot of people can be receptive, and some people may not be receptive. But thank God that what you're doing, you're sharing it, and you're bringing peace to those that are going through their grief moment and their time because there's not an expiration on grief. Some of you know we just got to let people go through their, their moments. Um, but everybody has their different times for it. But I am so grateful for you, Paula Lynch, for sharing your story with us tonight. We almost run out of time tonight, but I do want you to share with our listeners and give us some encouraging words on tonight because there may be someone out there listening that needs some peace or peace of mind. Um, they may have just recently lost a loved one, and they need an encouraging word. Just leave a, with a word of uh, encouragement tonight. Yes. Well, All I can say to people is your loved ones can still be around you. It doesn't mean they're not in heaven or or wherever, um, but their spirit, they're still around you. They still care about us, and they don't want us to be sad because for them, life goes on. I mean, life is carried on. It's just carried on in a different way. And and they're part of, you know, the the big universal infinity and, with spirit. And, you know, they're still involved and engaged in things on, I say, I call it on the other side. Um, I, I feel like because of their energy, you know, their energy just really changes, you know, And we all reach that point. You know, when we die, it's just a question that we're dropping the heavier energy that makes up our body, and we're going to the next energy level, which is like spirit. And it's it's a wonderful, glorious thing. And I can tell you that people who are on the other side, um, they're very happy, and they're a part of, of such a bigger picture and and it's just so fulfilling and so that that feeling that's how people are when they cross over and you know what i don't fear death at all in fact you know i look forward to the day when you know i take that step and the next step is i'm into infinity and 
it's just it's all good and so i would just encourage people to start thinking about knowing that their loved one is probably around them visiting them wanting to give them comfort but you know in a lot of ways our grief blocks being able to feel them around you know that they're around um you know, especially when somebody first passes, we have such grief. Um, but, you know, my my deal is take a moment, uh, still yourself, and be open to calling to your, your loved one, perhaps who's crossed over, and just saying, you know, I appreciate the fact you were in my life. I know your spirit's probably still around checking on me. And just try to reconnect with the the feeling of love that you had with them. And Mm -hmm. that's what I try to share with people in the end is that, you know, I know my brother's around every now and again. I have had people say to me, well, do you think your brother is an earthbound, you know, like ghost? And I'm like, no. (laughs) No, he's not a ghost. He's earthbound. He's in spirit. Mm -hmm. And... So I just encourage people to to believe that their loved ones are around checking on them. Awesome, awesome and amazing because we are spiritual beings. You know, we're spiritual beings having a physical experience, so we're all spiritual. So I am so grateful for you, Paula, for sharing your story and your encouraging words. And we do want our listeners to know where they can purchase your book and any social media links you might want to share with us as well. Okay, well, um, I do have a website, and um, on the first page it will tell people more about the book, and you can order from there. But essentially – the book is available only online, and that you can order it through Amazon. You can order it through Balboa Press or uh, Barnes and Noble, and it's available in all three formats. You can get it as an ebook, you can get it as a paperback, or you can get it as a hard copy. Um, and so, um, I also have done, as you mentioned, a number of podcasts, and really. All people have to do is um, look up my name, Paula Lynn's um, podcast or interviews or something, and you know other other um, podcasts and information will come up. And so, you know, and each each interview is different and provides different information in terms of uh, of the level of detail that you know there's time for. Uh, but the I would say this about the book. Um, believe me, you will you'll travel down into the deep deep uh, depths of of grief, but then you'll come out on the other side in terms of seeing how my life progressed with all the gifts that have come through for me, and hopefully, it, as you say, it will provide um, some some comfort to people. Awesome, 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 and amazing, incredible woman of God. Thank you so much, Paula Lynch. And listeners, you got to go out and get that book. And you all, you have all kinds of ways that you can get it. So just read it and be blessed. Thanks again, Paula, for sharing your story with us on tonight. And I pray that God will continue to bless you and to use you for his glory and continue to share your story. It has been a blessing to have you on the show on tonight. Oh, Thank my goodness. So <laughs> Listeners, I have been so blessed tonight, and I pray that someone out there listening tonight has received something from this conversation from my guest, Ms. Paula Lentz, I tell you, this has been amazing tonight. It's truly been amazing. And I thank you again, Paula Lentz, for being with me tonight, and I pray blessings over your life. Remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. As God loves us, we have been commanded to love one another. Thanks again for tuning in to Amazing Grace right here on Faith Broadcast. Tune in next week for yet another great and inspiring show. Until next time, everyone have a good night and God bless. 